Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? I think this is a very important march, and I certainly hope and pray that many people come out and understand that these are some very fundamental rights that are being taken away from us, and we can't idly stand by and let that happen. for people to realize that their Second Amendment rights are at risk, and if we don't stand up for them united, we could wake up one morning and find they're gone. Six prizes. Six, thank you. And it's only 24 left, and we're drawn today. Well, it's always great to uh, come out and support the Second Amendment and uh, stand for freedom and send a message that uh, we're out there and we care about liberty. Rally up, and we're going to do a, a brief march down North Main Street. Our founding fathers, their intent was not to establish a royalty, and I see happening today in America what I would call the return of the divine right kings. If you're having a problem accepting some of the things they're doing, they will help you by stuffing it down your throat. That is not what our founding fathers intended. They intended for us to have a constitutional republic, if you can keep it. Get trampled on, not only figuratively, but literally, and every opportunistic dictator must first disarm the honest and law-abiding before enslaving and controlling them. Now, I mean no violence or harm to anyone. Government is not supposed to interfere with these unalienable rights. Government is instituted, as it says in the Declaration, instituted by men to secure, and in a sense, ensure these rights, not to meddle with them, subvert them, parcel them out, or God forbid, deny them in any way. Let me read that again from George Washington. The very atmosphere of firearms anywhere and everywhere restrains evil influence. They deserve a place of honor with all that's good. When firearms go, all goes. We need them every hour. Do you know that you cannot carry in the people's house because eight people got together and a few of them decided they needed to be a rule that said the Second Amendment stops at the doors where the oaths of office are supposed to be to uphold it? Is that appropriate? Is that right? Should your Constitution die at the doors of the people's building? No! I ask you, should your Constitution die at the doors of the people's building? No! You need to remember them in November. How many times have you been told that firearms bans and regulations are about safety? Do I need to remind you what happens when you give for safety? You lose your liberty. April 19th, 1775. Yeah. The Redcoats marching to Concord, Massachusetts. Do you know why they were marching? Yeah, they were going to confiscate the munitions of the militia. Interesting. What they were unable to do and what sparked the birth of a nation is being done incrementally now in Washington and right here in our state house. And it's up to us as citizens to stop it. In New Hampshire, the right to keep and bear arms was considered inherent in Part 1, Article 2. That recognized the right of the people to enjoy and defend life and liberty to acquire, possess, and protect property. 
has ever willingly recognized the rights of its subjects or citizens. Every advance in liberty has been achieved by the force of arms or the threat thereof. You must understand that you cannot rely on anyone else, not me, not Pastor Garrett, to defend your liberty. Because tomorrow, they may require a portion of that liberty in return for their services. Every time we allow government to restrict the ability of we the people to govern our own lives, it steals a little of our liberty. Every time we allow government to take a decision out of the hands of we the people, it destroys our independence. Every time we allow government to take away the risk of failure, it makes us less resilient, less self-reliant, robbing us of the ability to succeed. Every time we allow government to do for us what we ought to do for ourselves or each other, it makes us a little bit more the slave. The most fundamental directive of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of New Hampshire, and therefore the Constitution for the United States, is that you are not allowed to tolerate arbitrary power and oppression. You are not allowed to tolerate tyranny. The, there is no difference between tyranny at the point of a gun or a knife and tyranny at the point of a pen. Now, the answer is easy. All you have to do is enforce the Constitution. But that's not so easy. Enforcing constitutions upon government, laws and taxes, is a decision that you must make today and every day for the rest of your lives. There's, remember, the, the, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. You and your children. Are you, I challenge you, to pledge your lives, your fortunes, and your sacred honor to defend our liberty. Are you ready to make the sacrifices of the patriots who have gone before us count? For my part, I, am willing, I will pledge to pledge my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor to defend your liberty and mine. Will you pledge only to vote for legislators who can demonstrate a working knowledge of your constitutions? Will you require a governor who can recognize unconstitutional policy and is willing to veto it? Will you force your legislators to keep your officers and magistrates within their constitutional bounds or re re remove those officers and magistrates who refuse. Will you require, demand that your officers and representatives defend your rights and powers and the powers of your state from usurpation by the federal government? Will you demand that your legislators repeal every restriction on your right to defend yourselves, your family, in your homes and in the state house? Will you require them to pass a firearms freedom bill? Will you do everything necessary to put the people in Concord and the people in Washington back into their proper little boxes. Thank you.